For the past few years, we've seen countless theories flood the internet, and none of them so far-fetched as the one we're covering today. Birds aren't real. You may have heard that phrase mentioned either in earnestness or in jest, but it suggests the general idea that, well, birds aren't real, but instead part of an elaborate cover-up. The theory suggests that the phrase was first used to spread awareness about the genocide of nearly 12 billion birds, and then again when the conservation efforts failed to save them. Since then, the phrase has been used in reference to the belief that all of the birds have been replaced. The theory contends that the birds once were real, but have since gone extinct after being killed by the, quote, deep state and replaced with surveillance drones. Of course, with claims as significant as this, one might want to see some evidence, right? Well, according to the movement, there's more than you might think. The website birdsaren'treal.com shows evidence to support the theory, including allegedly leaked CIA documents and images that identify significant players in American political history posing near robot bird prototypes. The website includes a history of the CIA program to kill and replace birds, including anecdotal evidence suggesting of director of the CIA Alan Dulles. Dulles and his team hated birds with a passion, and were heard on many occasions calling them flying slugs and the scum of the skies. The movement, which claims to have been active since 1973, refers to their goal as, quote, once a preventative cause, but, quote, now our movement's prerogative is to make everyone aware. The website has videos, one with footage from what seems to be a Birds Aren't Real campaign in 1987, and another of an interview with a self-described CIA whistleblower named Eugene Price. Of course, if all of this evidence were real and verified, then something should be done. So why hasn't anything been done? Because it's all a joke. While you won't find it on their website, the creator of the Birds Aren't Real movement doesn't believe the theory himself. The movement's origin can actually be traced back to 2017, not 1973, when in January of that year, Peter McIndoo noticed counter-protesters at one of the women's marches happening in Memphis on the day of Trump's inauguration. According to McIndoo, the counter-protesters, quote, were clear aggravators. They were encroaching on something that was not their event. They had no business being there. In response, he wanted to create a totally absurdist sign as commentary to what he was seeing. The sign he created? Birds aren't real. When people asked him about the sign, he improvised, stating that it was a movement born from an organization that failed to save bird populations. McIndoo stated, quote, I was just saying things that were the funniest thing to me at the time. Footage from that day in 2017, when McIndoo stood outside with his Birds Aren't Real sign, went viral. From there, it began snowballing. McIndoo started seeing Birds Aren't Real graffiti, and videos of the phrase being chanted in high school cafeterias. Since then, McIndoo and the Birds Aren't Real team have grown into a full-blown organization, with faux informational videos starring hired actors, a site that documents the fabricated history of the movement, merchandise, and more. With time, the satire's lore became more robust and expanded to include the CIA and a drone surveillance program. McIndoo's message was not meant to be literal, nor did he plan for it to take off the way that it has. Quote, it's not like I sat down and thought, I'm going to make a satire. I just thought I should write a sign that has nothing to do with what is going on, an absurdist statement to bring to the equation. However, this doesn't mean that it hasn't garnered followers, both those who see the messages as McIndoo intended and those who do not. Adding to this, McIndoo has only given a handful of authentic interviews on the phenomenon of the Birds Aren't Real conspiracy movement. Mostly, he remains in character, sticking to a script concerning the deep state. Connor Gaitis, who helps run Birds Aren't Real, has his own theory on the movement's popularity. Quote, It's an opportunity for, I think, our generation to laugh, to make fun, to kind of be like, look, here's kind of a laundry list of things that haven't come true. Cameron Caskey, who also helps with Birds Aren't Real, speaks from real-life experience with conspiracy theorists. 
Caskey survived the school shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in 2018 and helped co-found the March for Our Lives movement that came from the tragedy. In return, Caskey and several of his friends were accused of being crisis actors as part of a larger conspiracy theory that the shooting was actually a false flag planned event. McIndoo has given interviews explaining how and why birds aren't real got its start and that it is not a literal belief system or actual theory. McIndoo and his team tried to create a narrative that is obviously fake and would not have harmful ramifications if someone did believe it. Quote, the idea is meant to be so preposterous, but we make sure nothing we're saying is too realistic. That's a consideration with coming out of character. While this is a satire of the real harmful conspiracies that people spread every day, the fact that at least a few people have jumped on in earnest and actual support of spreading the birds aren't real message unironically stands as a testament to that no matter how ridiculous the idea or incredible the facts, some people just want to believe the worst.